Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to quickly break down two crucial transformer losses, eddy current loss and hysteresis loss. We'll cover what they are, how they happen, and how we can minimize them. A transformer has three main parts. The core, made of magnetic material, serves as the path for flow of the magnetic flux. The windings, which are coils of conductive material, one called the primary winding and the other the secondary winding, and insulation, which prevents short circuits between the windings and the core. Before directly going on to understand eddy current loss, let's have a brief look on arrangement of windings on transformer core. In a core type transformer, the windings are placed around two vertical limbs of a rectangular core. The magnetic flux mainly flows through the core's two limbs. In a shell type transformer, the windings are placed around the central limb of a three limb core and the magnetic flux is confined within the two outer limbs. Let's start with eddy current loss. When AC passes through a transformer's primary coil, it creates a changing magnetic field. This changing field induces circulating currents within the transformer core. These are the eddy currents. As these currents flow through the conductive material of the core, they resist the flow of energy, converting some of it into heat. This heat is wasted energy, and that's eddy current loss. Now, how do we reduce eddy current loss? Well, since these currents flow through the core material, we use laminated cores. By making the core from thin, insulated sheets, we restrict the flow of these currents, reducing the loss. So laminating the core material helps keep eddy current loss low. But there's a downside. The disadvantage is that these losses still exist. And no matter how thin the laminations, some loss is inevitable. Next, let's talk about hysteresis loss. This is a bit different. When the AC magnetic field changes direction, the magnetic domains in the core material don't instantly follow the magnetic field. They lag behind. This lag results in hysteresis loss, where energy is lost as heat each time the magnetic field reverses. The material essentially fights to keep up with the changing field. The BH curve shows how a magnetic material reacts when an external magnetic field is applied. As the magnetic field intensity increases, the material's magnetic domains align. At some point, all the domains are aligned and the material reaches saturation. This is the flat top of the curve. When magnetic field intensity decreases, flux density doesn't drop instantly to zero. This is because some domains remain aligned, creating remnants or residual magnetism. Additional energy is required to force B to zero when magnetic field reverses direction. Also, more energy is required to align the domain during magnetization. Both energies contribute as heat loss, which is termed as hysteresis loss. To reduce hysteresis loss, we choose materials that have low hysteresis characteristics, like silicon steel. These materials respond more quickly to the changing magnetic field, which means less energy is lost. However, the downside is that while silicon steel is effective, it's also more expensive. So there's always a trade-off between cost and efficiency. That's all for today's quick breakdown of eddy current loss and hysteresis loss. Hopefully this clears things up for you. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more quick engineering insights. Thanks for watching.